Alright, here we are at our third video on our series designing Monster Hunter Rise Monsters after Yokai. If you hadn't checked them out, there are part 1 and 2 of this series with 10 other monsters, including a separate video discussing the potential offspring of Wind Serpent Ibushi and Thunder Serpent Nara. So you may also go check them out before or after watching this video, your choice. Today, to commemorate the release of the new patch, we will be discussing 5 more new monsters, plus 1 old monster I gave a yokai based subspecies to. There is still one more video in this series planned, so please subscribe to see it if you enjoyed this one. Now let's get into it, shall we? Tesso. Tesso is a weir rat, originally not a yokai but a monk named Raigo, whose blessing helped the emperor conceive a child after the emperor was concerned for his succession. For this thanks, the emperor promised to build a new building in Raigo's temple, where he could train new monks. But Raigo's rival monks on another temple pulled their political strings, convincing the emperor to go back on his word to Raigo. In protest to this broken promise, Raigo goes on a hunger strike for 100 days until he died, his heart still brimming with rage both to the emperor and the rival temple. Shortly after, Raigo's vision appeared in the young prince's dream, and a few days later after that, the prince died, leaving the emperor without an heir once more. But that was not the end as Raigo's spirit continued to turn into a giant rare rat, renamed as Tesso, who leads an army of rats to attack his hated rival temple, eating right through the walls, doors, roofs, and floors, as well as the temple's precious scrolls, books, and even statues of the Buddha. Tesso himself is said to have hair as hard as stone, and teeth and claws of iron, and therefore could not be defeated but only sealed into a shrine. As a monster, I think Tesso should be like the Mook leader type monster like the Drome's the Great Isuji, leading a pack of smaller rat monsters. It has hard fur and metal teeth, claws, and tail, which it can use to attack. To reflect this, I also add in the element of a pangolin into its design as well. On top of that, I think to allude to the myth of Tesso's rat being able to eat through doors and walls, it should be able to inflict a specific ailment that eats through the hunter's sharpness, while its natural hardness will cause yellow sharpness to bounce. Because of this, I think it worked best as a 4 star monster. Just around the time where the hunter does get the green sharpness to cut it, but your weapon probably only have just about enough green for the Tesso's sharpness eating ability to still be a bitch since it would force you to sharpen just about twice as often. Maybe on high rank, you could up it so that only blue sharpness can cut it. That would also be a bitch to fight. It would live in the shrine ruins, sandy plains, and frost islands. Juboko Juboko is a yokai tree that sprouts on the battlefield where many people has died. Starting as an ordinary tree but becomes a yokai when it sucked up the blood of the countless people who died there becoming a vampiric tree that thirsts for blood, gaining the ability to move its tube-like branches to attack people with and suck blood from them, leaving the dried empty tusk for the birds and insects to feed on. To make it into a monster hunter creature, I decided to make it a combination of a stick insect, a leaf insect, and a mosquito. It's a long insect that disguises itself as a tree with red leaf, the head and front forelimbs has bushy red scales that look like leaves. It also has two sets of mosquito wings along its length to allow it to fly. When hunters go nearby, it would swing its arm forward, grabbing them before stabbing, sucking blood with its mosquito proboscis. When it does this grapple move, to emphasize on it really stealing your health, I think it should also be able to steal and drink your potion. Yes. Not like Camellios would just steal it, the Juboko will drink your potion and heal itself on the spot. It can also shoot out its leaf-like scales to inflict bleeding like Serechios, and it can also shoot out a cloud of pheromone liquid on the hunters, which will summon the other smaller insect monsters, including the Shimimorio from the first video, to come attack you so at higher ranks, it could summon the Ashura form of the Shimimorio and make it so much more of a bitch to fight. It lives in a shrine ruin and flooded forest, and has 3 stars. Hitotsume Nudo Now we are on to 5 stars and above. 
the Hitosume Nudo or the One-Eyed Monk is considered to be one of the most powerful O Nudo or the Giant Monk type yokai. As his name says, he is a giant monk with one eye at the center of his face. He is dressed in a luxurious robes and travels in palanquins carried by lesser demons, but can still very much outrun humans on his own feet. He attacks humans on the highway at night. As it was said that he used to be a very strict monk in life, who would expel other monks from his temple if he thought them to be lazy. He saw the world as wicked. He became a yokai to punish the disorderly world. So he is quite one intense monk. As a monster, I don't feel like making him an actual cycloptic monster, but rather a monster that has the appearance as if it is cycloptic. So I decide to base it off the barrel eye fish. One of the freakiest animal on this planet. With a large transparent dome over its head, it gives the image that the monster only has one huge bulging eye. I smash the barrel eye together with the body plan of a piscine wyvern. To further up the creep factor, I also combine in with the mouth of the hatchet fish and the transparent body of a glass catfish. The gimmick of this monster is that it's meant to be a monster emphasized on lockdown. It has all of your average piscine wyvern range attacks, but of which it can inflict paralysis. And then it can also flashbang the hunter with his giant eye. So it's a monster that doesn't want you moving anywhere. It can also coat an aura around its body, which will immediately sap and paralyze anything that comes close, like a walking bug sapper. This aura will remain on its body for a very long time until it hits something. So it would be very unwise to approach it carelessly. Think the Keisu electrified charge attack, only it stays on the whole time. And because of this appearance, you can easily just recolor it into a darker color. Eliminate the one big iris and make the eyes inside glow instead, turning it into an umibosu or sea monk, another yokai which is a giant sea monster that attacks ships at night. It lives in the flooded forests and frost islands and is either 5 star or 6 stars. Hoyao Kamui The Hoyao Kamui is a kamui or nature divine spirit in Ainu mythology in the shape of a venomous dragon particularly known for its horrible stench and is far more powerful in the summer months but is weaker in the cold. For this trait, it is named Sak Samo Ayep, or those that must not be named in summer. But unlike Voldemort, the Hoyal Kamui is known to have a long swordfish-like snout that would make the Dark Lord jealous, on top of a serpentine body with wings. Its stench is known to be so bad that it could cause plants to shrivel and die as well as cause people to lose hair and develop swells on their skin. Perhaps even burns. So as a monster, I think the appearance given in the mid already give it a good monster hunter vibe, so we won't change it much. I just stick with the overall sailfish appearance, give it dragon aspect because both of the mythology and because monster hunter, give it long drapey tail hair that looks stinky, and give it the helicoprion shark circle saw lower jaw. Since stench is its defining feature, I think that can just be its whole gimmick. It immediately inflicts soil status on anyone every time it gets close, preventing you from using potion unless you use deodorant. Basically, you have three options. Pack a shit ton of deodorants to use every time you run in and out to attack it, do a no hit run on it, or use a heavy bow gun and exclusively snipe it from 5 kilometers away. Or if you think that would make it either too difficult or too annoying to fight, then maybe limit this effect to just when it's enraged. Or in the reverse, if you want to make it even more hardcore, then also make it inflict poison if you get close. Any other monsters caught in the range of the stink will be poisoned and have their health quickly drained. Anything that dies inside the range of the stink, regardless of whether or not it is because of the stink will itself release a purple poison cloud that will further poison hunters that approach it. It could also attack with its wacky swordfish nose and saw blade jaw, using quick slashes and unfurling the jaw to whip the hunter in toward the self. Its strongest attack has a Duke Giga Drill Breaker, where it charges forward while spinning violently. 
Its slashing fins and tail have increased the reach hitbox and anyone caught right on the Gnosis attack will receive severe damages. It lives in the sandy plains in the flooded forest. Hakutaku The Hakutaku is a white bull like yokai with six horns. Two on the head and four on its backs, and nine eyes. Three on the head and six on the torso below the horns. It is a yokai originating from China. Living in remote mountains only in lands where the ruler is wise and virtuous, and therefore are good omens. It is wise with incredible knowledge of all monsters, which was how it described 11,520 types of supernatural creatures to the Huangdi, the legendary Yellow Emperor of China. In Japan, it is known to come down to villages to warn people of the incoming plagues and therefore, it is revered as a symbol of medicine. As a monster, I make it a giant bull, around the size of Kol Faraz, so it is one that will be fighting in its own arena. With the description of the horns on its back, I decided to give it the Stegosaurus plates. And since we're doing that, why not also give it Stegosaurus tail as well? This is where I'll also throw in some inspiration from Nandi, the white bull mount of Lord Shiva in Hindu mythology, the god of destruction, for the connection not only because they're revered white bulls, but also because Hakutaku is known for having the third eye on his forehead, like Shiva himself, who has a third eye that should remain closed, because if it opens then it would bring forth flames that burn the whole world. The hump on the back and the grouping under side skin, as well as the reed of gemstone on the design, are to invoke the image of a Cebu cow decorated for a festival. Because of this, the spikes on the Stegosaurus tail should also be shaped like a trident to reflect Shiva's personal weapon, the Trishula. The Hakutaku lives in a cavern of crystals with light pouring down from the ceiling, where the Hakutaku would bathe itself in the light, refracting them with the prisms on its body to turn into powerful beams that flood the area and attack hunters. Because of this, the more light and more prisms remain on the Hakutaku's body, the stronger, larger, and more beams it can shoot. Though it will start off with the eyes on the forehead and body closed, and a tail covered in rock. Because of this, it's gonna be really hard to fight at first, since all of its attack are really powerful and has ridiculous hitbox, and to weaken it, you not only have to break the prism horns on Hakutaku itself, but also collapse the cave to get rid of the light source. Only after you beat it in its face, that it would shift to the second phase, where it opened all of its eyes which would glow and become its own light source. It would smash a rock covering its tail to reveal the trident. Essentially, the second phase is it channeling the power of Shiva to kill you. In this phase, the area will be littered with crystals and prisms all over the place. So instead, the Hakutaka will shoot its beam into the prisms around the area, using them as mirrors that will reflect and spread beams all around. And of course, if there are some horns on the Hakutaku's body that remains unbroken, it can also use those to reflect beams at the hunters. Yato no Kami This is a plus one I wanted to make since it's not a full original new monster but rather giving a yokai motif to a subspecies of an existing monster. And I don't have enough ideas to be making another whole video out of this. The Yato no Kami is a malevolent snake deity appearing in the rice field. Its name translating to the Ultra Edge Lord meaning of God of the Night Sword. It is rumored to bring familial extermination to anyone who saw it, but was eventually killed by a man clearing the field, where a spirit is enshrined and banished into the mountains. Appearance wise, it is a snake with a sword coming out of its face, which is why we'll be making it as a Regios Water Elemental subspecies. Obviously, it has all of Seragios moves but with added effects. If the blades it throws out land in the water, it will release a constant pulse stirring and splashing the water around, carrying tiny shards chipped from the blade with the droplets that will assault and inflict bleed on the hunters as they come nearby. So it's a Seragio that kinda borrows the exploding scale trap strategy from Najarala, but can only use this in the water and also borrowing from Acidic Glavinus in being the Katana Weeb version, this Seragios also have several more moves, which it slashes with all the blades all over its body, mostly to precisely knock the hunters into the splash traps it sets up, 
Because of this, you can also call him Steve the Weeb. Alright, so that's a 5 plus 1 ideas for today. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you like idea videos like these, I have two other series, one pitching stories of my own novels, and one novel premise free giveaway, so please check them out if you are interested. Or if you're interested in seeing the next 5 monsters next time, please check out the previous videos if you hadn't already done so. And please also check out my series on why light novels are stereotypically bad, how this is damaging to the anime industry, and what we can do to change it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.